Great Lakes. I was um, uh, MacArthur got taken out of Korea. He was in charge of the Korean War back then. And, uh, he got into it with the president, I guess, because he they took him out uh, that and brought him back to the states and. We were Great Lakes, and we they lined us up along the road, and he come driving by in a convertible, and that was about all as far as seeing him. I just as he drove by. Uh, do you have any mascots on board the ships? Well, in the Orca, we had a little dog, and uh, it was. Uh, I don't know, just a mutt. They said my brother back aboard and snuck it on board or something. But uh, he just run around there with the rest of us. And on the Orca, we, we would have movies at night up on the fan tail of the ship. And I got a wood out of a packing crate come aboard and had made me a chair and set it out there and the, I had some place to sit when we had the movie. And the other guys just had to sit on the deck. But it was a real experience. And then the Orca, I was only about one of about five months and they decided they was over complimented. And I had more sea duty than most of the guys on the ship, so I was one of them got transferred off. And out of the 27 or so of us that got transferred off, there were just two of us that got transferred back to the States. We come back to Alameda Naval Air Station, and we're in a fleet air service quarter. And I was there by, oh, I don't know, I just slipped in my shoulder about six months later and had to go to the Naval Hospital. And I was in the hospital about six weeks. My shoulder was all, all right. I had to get it back in place. And I, uh, Transferred in from the squadron to uh, fighter squadron. And, uh, fighter squadron, I was a plane captain on this jet fighter, and it was an experience. And what did you have for duties as captain? Well, <clears throat> they, uh, <clears throat> if you were in a Plane captain just inspected the airplane and made sure it got refueled right and made sure that this and that and everything was all right. And, and well, he just generally had come in off a flight. <coughs> we sure that he made sure it got refueled and when we inspected to make sure there wasn't anything broken or anything. And, just keep it clean, that airplane. You were required to clean them with, they had some wax that you can put on them, keep them shiny and all. But I, I was in the squadron, I don't know how long. But anyhow, I come back to the States for discharge after that. I don't know where. I had 90 some days left when they took me overseas with the, on the Essex with the fighter squadron. And we had a, it was a nice trip over there. And then right after we got over, <coughs> we flew air support for. Uh, island of nationalist Chinese, and we 
operated there for about a month, just flying air support over that island. <coughs> I'm not sure what all <coughs> the nationalist Chinese were doing on that island, but anyhow, that's for about four weeks or five, we come, come, we went on back to <coughs> Yukushka and I got off the ship and went coming back to the States to get discharged. When you were in the Navy, did you get any leave to come back home, or was it all leave in little yeah. forts? No, I got, I had a couple of liberties when I came back home, and uh, the last time I uh, bought a car here and drove it back to California and uh, had it there while I was in station at Alameda Naval Air Station. And uh, then when we went home, I got in the fire squadron and then had to go back over. I left it in the storage area. And then I wasn't gone too often when I come back. And it didn't cost only about $20 rent to store it. Of course, twenty dollars was a lot of money back then. But anyhow, I got after I was back a lot, little while. I got discharged and headed back to Indiana. But I made a big mistake of stopping in Reno, Nevada, on the way back. And left quite a bit of my money there. I shouldn't have stopped. <laughs> What rank were you when you got out of the service? Petty officer, third class. That was an aviation machinist mate, third. That's E-4 in the Navy. Mm -hmm. When uh, you were in basic training, were you any good with the shooting and firearms training? We didn't have a whole lot, but whatever we did do, we shot a 45 automatic a few times, not very many. And then we had a rifle that was, I think it was on Springfield, if I'm not remember rightly now. And uh, I didn't really try to be outstanding with the rifle or anything because I'd heard, heard it, always heard it. If the Marine Corps needed more men, they took them from the Navy if they were a good shot with a rifle and all. Were there any that were taken? Not that I know of, but I wasn't going to take a chance. I didn't try too good to I'd be outstanding with the rifle, basic training. What the heck? Wouldn't have hurt me that the, they had to took me in the Marine Corps, but I, I had the, the highest score on the admittance test to the Navy. I had, a, I think, 135, and uh, the average score was about 115, and they, they, me and one other guy in my company was uh, told that we could go down for an interview to see if we wanted to go to officer candidate school. So we went down there for the interview, and then when the interview was about over, they told us that didn't have perfect vision, you couldn't go. And I had corrected vision and glass wore glasses. So I wasn't even inter they wasn't even interested in taking me. But if I had to, had to had twenty twenty vision, I could have applied for officers candidate school. The twenty eight days supporting the nationalist Chinese was part of Operation Pullback the evacuation of the Tachin Islands in February 1955. 
the U.S. 7th Fleet would support the operation to pull out 14,500 civilians, 10,000 Republic of China servicemen, 4,000 guerrilla fighters, and 40,000 tons of military equipment. The Tachin Islands were supposed to be taken over by the Communist Chinese in a dispute over the land.